It's a big honor for me today to have as guest Professor Andrew Gillett from Australia. Professor Gillett, thank you very much to be here with us. Can you please introduce yourself briefly? Thank you, Rocco. So I'm Andrew Gillett. I'm speaking to you at the moment from Queensland in Australia, and I'm speaking in Rocco's tomorrow. Um, I had the good fortune to do my higher degrees at the Centre for Medieval Studies at University of Toronto, where I studied with Walter Goffa, Tim Barnes, um, Jocelyn Hilgarth, Alexander Callender Murray, and Edward Cheneau, fantastic people. Um, I've since taught uh, universities in Melbourne and Sydney. I was uh, Associate Professor, which means something different in Australia from America, Associate Professor of Latin Antiquity, um, and Head of Department and Associate Dean Research, all that managerial stuff. Um, I'm interested primarily in historical narratives of late antiquity, how they work, what they tell us, not just from their contents, but their circumstances of production. Um, diplomacy is one of those aspects. Um, and I particularly like to step back from our sources and think of them not just as Gregory of Tour or whatever, but as think of them in terms of communication and media and how they work. Um, at the moment, I'm particularly interested in uh, the possibility of doing comparative work between the early medieval Western states, which is my primary area of research, and the more or less contemporary states, buffer states between Rome and, and Iran, the pre-Islamic pre Arabic states, as they're called, and a little bit of Australian history. Okay. Professor Juliet, uh, how was your experience at our centre in the context of your participation as a guest in the lecture series? It was extremely interesting, um, particularly because I had technical problems. That makes it really interesting. But no, it was very interesting. It was very interesting being involved with so many scholars from different areas who are interested not only in exploring the interconnections between Roman world and Islam, but in actually practising it. So... It, it was really good to be thrown in with uh, such a mix of people. Um, it was also, for me, my first Zoom conference. Um, and that plus size of that was that it was a general international audience, um, which was great. And also that I didn't have to fly for 24 hours to get there and be, be hung up from jet lag for a week. Um, the downside is not actually visiting Hamburg and having those informal but really valuable talks that you get when you do meet, uh, do meet colleagues in other areas. Um, so it would be nice to visit another time. But I actually thought that the being able to speak to people in Hamburg but also in other parts of the world at once, it was just a terrific experience, actually. Great. Professor Gillette, what potential did you see in the centre, and can you imagine collaborating with us in the future? Okay, I, I said at the beginning of my talk what a great idea I think the Roman Islam Centre is, and I really meant that. I, I really strongly believe that um, um, the history of the pre-modern Eurasia is totally interconnected, and it's only historical traditions from the Renaissance onwards that have so strongly you know, brought apart those areas. And at this stage, in the 21st century, um, these areas should all be studied as one unit. As an undergraduate, I can remember thinking how exciting that prospect was and thinking that I never expected to become an academic, but thinking that, you know, in my lifetime, that was going to totally change. It is changing, but much more gradually than young me would have thought. Um, as a bit of a sidebar, Bear with me one second. I, I used in my teaching practice, I used to incorporate in my late antiquity units, um, I used to incorporate five areas the two superpowers, Rome and Iran, Byzantium, Islam, the early medieval Western Europe, as equally as a unit. So the students got it as a unit. And there was a real side benefit to that, apart from the academic one. Australia is a very multicultural. Um, country with a very high proportion of first and second generation immigrants. And the number of students I had who came up and said that was the first time they'd seen their family ancestry and the history they picked up informally integrated with the sort of capital H history they got at school or whatever. 
um, the first time they'd seen how things pieced together. And these were students from, um, from Iran and Hungary and Egypt and Afghanistan and Ireland from all over um, Eurasia. Um, some students from, from Southeast Asia, uh, th there was a really interesting social benefit and pedagogical benefit apart from the academic. Anyway, um, so I think, I really think this is the research of the future. In terms of collaboration, uh, as we saw in last week's seminar with um, Paul's talk and mine, um, diplomacy is big. It's big in the early Islamic world. The Byzantine diplomacy is a catchphrase. Um, you know, I'm convinced that the interconnections within the Roman Empire bled into interconnections outside. So I think that diplomacy has got a lot a lot of mileage as a, as a not just a phenomenon in and of itself, but also as a sign of the deep penetration between these parts of the world and history. So I think I think there's there's certainly a lot of potential for future work in that. Um, and more specifically, as I said, I'm interested in comparative work between the Western European kingdoms and those kingdoms between um, Rome and Islam. If, there's potential work for there that would be interesting as well. But I think, I honestly think that anybody working certainly in late Rome and really most medieval studies should be interested in this sort of collaboration. Okay. Professor Gillette, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much for your time. I hope to see you uh, soon here in Hamburg, uh, live. <laughs> and. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> To, I hope we, you will join us as soon as possible. Thank you, Rocco. Thank you. It's been a very, very interesting experience.